Hey, welcome everyone. Today in the shop, we're working on a 2001 Chrysler Town & Country, but really this video can apply to the Plymouth Voyager and Dodge Grand Caravan as well, as long as they're running that same automatic temperature control. Yes, we're working with a blower motor problem. It seems that I've had a rash of these lately, but that's all right. This one is a little bit uh, more interesting, but it's also a pretty easy diagnosis. We're only gonna be using a voltmeter today and your uh, traditional uh, test light. That's all we're going to be using today to diagnose this problem. Now this really can be two different problems. One, it could be a blower motor in-op, it doesn't work at all. Or two, it could be a blower motor that's stuck on even if you turn off the switch that runs the blower motor. The other complaint from this customer is that when the switch is turned on and he's asking for the blower motor to work, he tries to manually adjust the control of the motor speed and it doesn't do anything. It's just going one consistent speed. So what do you test? What do you do? Let's get right into it. Step one, we're going to go ahead and just make sure that we have power and ground. Now you could start with that under the hood in this IPM fuse relay center right here, but we're going to have to get to the blower motor itself eventually anyway. So let's go ahead and pull the glove box out of the way. We're going to go ahead, open it up and push in on the two sides here to expose the hinges at the bottom of the glove box. Now we start on one side, we lift up to release the first clip, push down to release the second clip, and lift up again to release the third clip. We get the glove box out of the way. All right, once the glove box is out of the way, we expose the blower motor power module. This is basically the fancy term for the resistor. This is controlling the blower motor speed. So our black and green wires right here go directly to the blower motor. This guy is going to go ahead and control the speed going to that through what it's called the power module. So what we're going to be dealing with now is this connector. We have a blue wire, black and orange wire, and a blue and light blue wire in the center there, that small one. All right, so the key is turned on. Our blower motor is currently running, even though the power to the module is off. So we've turned everything off, just the key on, blower motor is still running. So we'll go ahead and disconnect this connector. And our first test is check power and ground. So I have my test light uh, and uh, on the clamp end here, I'm just using my, my uh, pocket screwdriver and I just want to go between the two outer pins of this connector and make sure that I have power and ground. Test light lights up nice and bright between the two outer pins. You could also use your voltmeter if you want. If you don't have a test light and you're using a voltmeter, Again, I'm just going to use this to give me a connection on my alligator clip. And we should see 12 volts or very close to it. There we go. Okay. So that's what we're looking for on there. So if you don't have that, you can track backwards and you can go into that instrument panel fuse box uh, under the hood and look at that fuse number 10. 40 amp fuse or the blower motor relay. So now we know the blower motor is being fed with power and ground and we kind of knew that already because this one is running but for those of you that have a blower motor that's in op that's where you want to start. If you're dealing with the concern where the blower motor runs all the time or you're dealing with it where it doesn't ever change speed now we want to verify that that switch is working and that's what the customer actually came in here thinking that they needed a new blower motor fan speed switch. Now is the time to check out that small blue and light blue wire that we find under here. So we're going to take the voltmeter and we're going to clamp one end onto ground. There's a nice little bolt that's hiding back here. We're going to clamp that onto ground and we're going to use the small lead here. And now is where it gets a little bit tricky because if we have this unplugged, we've got to have the fan on. If we have this unplugged, we're not going to see anything like we're, we're supposed to. It's just not how it works. It has to be plugged in in order for the voltage to be read on. So we're gonna actually bring our probe in from underneath. And we're gonna probe onto that blue and light blue wire. Like so. You should see a small amount of voltage. And then if we go ahead and turn the switch, we should see that voltage change. So we're low, and then we turn it all the way to high. So on high, it should be about two and a half volts. On low, 
should be about eight and a half volts. This is confirming that the switch is functional. So we've got power and ground to the power module. We've got that voltage control from the switch, so we, so we know that that's working. It's gotta be the power module that's causing our problem. This is what it looks like, aluminum heat sink on there to keep the electronics nice and cool. A small circuit board inside of there that's controlling the speed of the blower motor. So it needs a new power module, but at the same time, it's always a good idea to go ahead and either measure the current of the blower motor or pull the blower motor out and make sure that it is actually free, the bearings aren't seized up, because the blower motor could actually take out this unit, okay? So let's go ahead and show you how to change it out. It's really simple. So you wanna start by unplugging both of the connectors. You just push in, give them a little wiggle. Again, green and black is going to the blower motor. This guy is the input, unplug that. Again, you just push in the tab, wiggle the connector out. And this is gonna use an eight millimeter socket on here. Just like so. There's our old one. Go ahead and install the new one right back into the case. And these are just plastic mounted screws, so don't over tighten these. You don't wanna strip them out. Plug the connectors back in, make sure they click. And now we should hear variable control from our blower motor. As I turn the knob from high to low. All right, so the blower motor resistor, or in this case, it's called the power module, took care of this problem. You wanna verify your power and ground going to this thing, and then you wanna verify that that control voltage is coming in there properly. Again, about two and a half volts on high speed, about eight and a half volts on the lowest speed on that blue and light blue wire. All right, I hope this helps you to diagnose your automatic temp control problem on your early to mid 2000s Chrysler uh, Dodge Plymouth product that you're working on. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so you can get updates from our videos and make sure you click on that little bell icon so you get a notification when we do actually publish a new video. Again, I really appreciate you watching. Stay safe out there, everyone. Happy wrenching. Thank you.